let's let's turn the page for Mike and hot seats and uh, bring in a guy who really needs no introduction. Uh, he is Mackenzie Milton, and he stops by the Sons of UCF Live. KZ, welcome in. How y'all doing? Doing What's pretty good. On, fellas? Let's begin with some congratulations uh, for you on your recent marriage. Uh, the lovely photos you posted of your bride, and, and you clean up all right, too. I appreciate it, brother. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and you got a, a baby on the way. How, how, how yes, close sir. is that? About a month away now, um, literally right around the corner. Just had our 35 week checkup yesterday, and you know, we're excited. Do we know boy or girl? Has there been a big reveal uh, situation? Uh, no, nah, we, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't have a big uh reveal. You know, we had a baby shower and that kind of stuff, but we're having a boy. Um, super excited for him to get here. All right, congratulations. Thank we you. know you are involved with mission control, you've got a big event. Yes, sir. I mean, this is as events go at UCF. I mean, this is an A-list show. Tell us more yeah. about it. June seventeenth. Yeah, you know, I just, you know, I got involved with the NIL stuff um, in July last year with Dreamfield, um, starting that company, and then, you know, we launched Mission Control here just as an opportunity for um, the underclassmen athletes here at UCF to have creative fan in, fan engagements and as a way for them to be uh, compensated. You know, so. You know, Mission Control has been great since we launched in February. And, you know, we just we came up with this idea to bring back some of the great UCF players, because since my time here, you know, I've never had the chance to interact with guys like Dante, Blake, um, Asante Samuel, Brandon Marshall and those kind of guys. Just they haven't been around much, you know, and I and I feel like that kind of piece has been missing. And, um, you know, I just this offseason, it, it was a great opportunity to get all those dom dominoes to line up to, to get everyone in one room for a great cause, raising funds for Mission Control. And obviously the, the Otis Anderson Jr. Foundation, I think is the biggest thing that that has got those guys to want to come, you know. Um, a lot of those guys were close with him. So any way we can can continue to have his memory live on through us, we're going we're gonna to find ways to do that. Casey, old heads like me saw that graphic and we saw Dante and I was like, oh, well, this is interesting. <laughs> Dante obviously hasn't been around in, in much in years. Tell us how that came about. Did you get a chance to talk to him? Tell, tell us how it came about that Dante was able to, to, to be a part of this. Yeah, you know, I just through the grapevine was able to somehow get his number and just reach out to him. And obviously there's that mutual respect there, just him doing what he did here and obviously in the, in the NFL and then me doing what I did. It was really my first time talking to him and you know, I just let him know what we we're trying to do is for a good cause. And he said he's all for it. So, um, you know, if I can be a catalyst to just continue to keep the culture here and, and grow it here at UCF, um, I'm going to do that. You know, I, I haven't had the chance to meet Dante yet. I'm super excited. June 17th is going to be my first time to meet him, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm fired up. Mackenzie, Mikey Keene had a pretty good freshman year last year, and going into his sophomore year, you had made the biggest jump ever from freshman to sophomore year. Um, what, what was it about that offseason? What kind of what advice would you give to Mikey heading into this season? That's funny. I was just talking to Mikey today, and I was telling him, you know, my freshman year we went six and seven, and I got booed in my bowl game. You beat Florida <laughs> in yours, so you're, you're already you're already starting off hotter, better than me. So. You know, I love Mikey. He works extremely hard. You know, anytime I'm in the Wayne Dench, he's in there, which is a great sign for a guy that's looking to be a quarterback. And I just, just love the way he carries himself, love the way he, he came to that situation last year and took over the team and led. Um, I'm excited to see what he does. Uh, he's got another guy in that quarterback room in John Rice Plumley uh, yep. that's uh, going to give him a run. What's the, the biggest differences you see between the two? What do you think that competition is going to be like in preseason camp? Yeah, you know, I got to watch a little bit in spring. Watched the spring game, obviously, and John looked tremendous in that. Um, I think the good thing is we have two, actually three, I believe, quality quarterbacks that can make plays. And, you know, most teams struggle to find one, and we have three that are quality and, and can win us games. So I think that's huge. I think that – that's great for our program. I think it's great that there's competition in that room. Those guys are going to get better each day competing with each other. Um, but nah, I'm excited to see uh, John push Mikey and Mikey push John. And obviously I think Tommy has, has some growing pains to go through as a freshman, but he's, um, 
he's a special player too. So I'm excited to see all these guys bring a little something different to the table. I think John obviously has that X factor with his legs and you saw during the spring game, he can make all the throws too. So I think it's going to come down to who takes care of the ball, who makes plays and whoever coach Malzahn trusts, trust to win games week in and week out. So, but either way, we're going to be in good hands. Casey, you've mentioned at, at points in your career, perhaps coaching is, is in your uh, in your path at some point. So let me, let me put your analyst hat on for a second. How would you describe Gus Malzahn's offense? What are the things that are kind of the hallmarks of what he does really well? And if the Knights are clicking, what has to be working offensively for us? I think the thing I love most about, you know, Malzahn's offense, just the – I've only was able to really watch one game, like, fully, and that was the Florida game. And I watched some of the Louisville game because we were playing them the following week at Florida State. But for me, I love the I love the power run game. I love the way I saw our O-line dominate Florida. That was extremely impressive. Um, I love the way he gets the ball to his playmakers. I think the most important thing you got to ask yourself as a play caller is who's in the game on both offense and defense. And I think he does a great job exploiting, exploiting those matchups. Um, I think it's creative with the with the eye candy in the run game. Um, but no, nah, I think I think he's, he does a great job, and I think he's done a great job his whole career. You've had the chance to play under a few different coaches, obviously Frost with that option offense, and the hypo with, with the hurry up, and now Norvell. What kind, what style do you prefer? And when you become a coach, which we know you want to, what style do you think you're going to lean towards? <laughs> I prefer Scott Frost offense over anyone else's, um, and that's not to bash the other guys or anything like that. I just. There was not a time in Frost's offense where I truly felt uncomfortable or anything like that. But what I did love about Hype's offense is he kept what I really, what I really loved um, with Frost. So it was kind of, of a mesh of both. And I think I'll find a way to kind of mix both schemes. I love, I like the wide splits because, you know, it cleans up pictures for the QBs and, and the RPO game, and it kind of makes the defense force their hand and, and what covers they're going to run. Um, but I love what we did with Frost in terms of we never ran one play out of the same form formation more than two times in 2017. And I just think that to me, that's an incredible stat because you probably look anywhere across the country. Nobody else is putting up numbers like that. Frost is always mixing it up with the looks, with the matchups. And he's really just second to none in terms of a play caller, in my opinion. How could you have used an Isaiah Bowser? You see how he fits into that offense now. I mean, the guy's a bruiser. Isaiah's a stud. It's actually funny. I, I met Isaiah when he was coming out of high school um, and going to Northwestern up at the Touchdown Club of Columbus because he was like all Columbus, all Ohio, everything. Um, but golly, he's, he's a special player, just brute running back and make guys miss in the open field too. So would have loved to have him, but, you know, I <laughs> I have my fair share of great running backs, too, so I can't really complain. All right, Casey, again, we know uh, uh, June 17th, built by UCF. Uh, a lot of icons are going to be here, and, and you yeah. are among the icons. And, Kenzie, when I think about icons, I think about iconic photos. So I have a top five list of the iconic Mackenzie Milton photos from UCF. I want you to, to grade my list, maybe give you some memories as you see these photographs. So number five, probably underrated, in my opinion. I've got the touchdown you have against Pittsburgh. So this, for me, two things. One, this was obviously coming off the, the year in 17, Pittsburgh Power 5 team. People didn't think we could beat a Power 5 team. You guys beat them up that day. Yep. And on this play, I think, remember correctly, I think this guy twisted your ankle and you got up and got mad at him. So this is my number five Mackenzie <laughs> Milton photo. Your thoughts? Yeah. You know, I ran a quarterback draw here, stuck it out, scored. And after I scored, the guy, like, literally tried twisting my ankle. And I got up and – you know, probably said some profane words to him. <laughs> uh, and so did a couple of my teammates. And then, you know, after that, like, I was extremely upset. I was like, all right, we're going to pour it on these guys. And I think that was the first touchdown of the game. And then we ended up just routing them. And I was talking a lot of smack that game because that pissed me off. That was that was, <laughs> that was was some Bush League BS. You don't, you don't do that to guys. It's just, that's not cool. All right, but, Pitt, but, but, but Pitt's kind of notorious for doing stuff like that. So, fair. Happy members. Number four, this is a first down point in, uh, in, in the Peach Bowl. Do you even remember when this came? Uh, I think we got to like across the their 20, I believe. And I think it was either in the third or fourth quarter. And I was just, I felt the momentum, you know, I felt, I felt us starting to take over the game. And, you know, I was excited. I was starting to roll a little bit. 
So I, I remember this one for sure. Number three on my list. This is the uh, the the Superman, the S on the chest. Was this yeah. planned? Was this something absolutely. you kind of did maybe around the Absol- facility? Okay, absolutely. That this was planned one hundred percent. My brother called me before the game. He said, "Hey, if you score a touchdown, a rushing touchdown, you got to do the Superman, the the Cam Newton to their sideline." I was like, "I was like, I was like, all right." I don't. I was like, "Their defense is really good. I don't know if I'm gonna score on the ground." <laughs> Sure enough, you know, Sam missed the block and it sprung a run and I was able to score and I was like, oh, snap. <laughs> I'm gonna be a- I didn't know how I felt, uh, felt about doing it, though, because I was like three of 16 at the time in the first half. But I was like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Number two. This is some controversy pre-show. Some members of the staff did not think this was number two. I have number two, Ooh, the yeah, Memphis that's... flip for a touchdown. I got that number one, KZ. That's my favorite. I think I know what's going to be one. But okay. um yeah, this is this is up there for sure. These are some good ones. This is, I mean, for me now, just how my career played out. This is up there for sure, for sure. So, what do you think number one is? I think it's the USF one. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> that's absolutely that. <laughs> this is the perfect photo that's of all a time, great picture. Because it's a touchdown. Your opponent's on the ground. He may be asleep. I can't actually tell from that photograph. Nothing better. That game is fantastic. <laughs> this is by far the number one photo. This is the most iconic photo of Mackenzie Milton at UCF. Yeah, this was awesome. I think we ran a, a gaps game with the AK. And my back was actually turned to the DN, that linebacker. And I just, I don't know, it was like a six. And I, I just felt him collapse on the edge and he was going to tackle AK. So I pulled it for like a naked. And, you know, I walked in and he dove and ate the turf. And he actually got taken out of the game after that. They played with no linebackers after but um, that was a great one. That's that's iconic right there for sure. Do you have any of these framed in your house? Uh, or what's your memorabilia situation like on display? I'm living in an apartment right now, so all the memorabilia is in the garage. <laughs> 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 but no, I don't have that one framed. I got I got a couple that people have gifted me with, but I've I've never gone out and framed any on my own. So maybe one day. You know, the one that didn't make it was you in the bathrobe petting the cat. I, I try to get Adam to get that one, but I think it's been scrubbed from the internet. <laughs> That's a damn shame. <laughs> that should be on the cover of GQ. <laughs> Casey, I know how big of an advocate you were for NIL and yeah. you know the transfer portal and all that stuff. The only thing, my question is, how do you convince fans to, to buy individual players merch when they're also transferring the next year and they're wearing a different uniform? You think that kind of conflicts with each other a little bit? Wait, say that one more time. So... The- the NIL, those people are selling individual merch, T-shirts, Mackenzie Milton T-shirts, and then the next day they're transferring to a different school. Right. How, how do you tell fans, you know, to, to trust me and, and buy my stuff, and then the next day they're out of there? You know, so for me, in terms of the brand I started, Ten Hana, you know, that started essentially like the week after I got hurt, and I just loved what it was about. You know, it was my culture being brought from Hawaii to here. Um, and just for me to have that impact on the city of Orlando where Hawaii is basically brought from me, with me to here and kind of had that effect on the community. That's really why I wanted to start that brand, not so much about Mackenzie Milton, but more so just as a lifestyle brand. But for the certain guys that are, you know, having like the fan memorabilia, because I had some of those like the big heads in the Florida State and the UCF uniforms. I think those are cool. Um, but to me, like, fans are only going to buy that when you're at their university or you're at um you're, you're doing certain things so i would advise guys like if you're going to start like a clothing brand or anything like that make it like a lifestyle brand that can you can take with you like 10 20 30 years after and that's what i see in in terms of 10 hana like i like i literally told my clothing guys like hey like all these big heads and stuff like that like i want it off my 10 hana website like i want this to be a lifestyle um street brand to where it's worldwide and it's not like Mackenzie Milton's part of the story but Ten Hana is a brand in itself which means one family and I I want that to be spread throughout the world in terms of that thought process of treating each other like family um but I understand what you're saying in, in the sense of like you know I know Isaiah Bowser's got his big heads and UCF uniforms and stuff like that um you know loyalty is rare nowadays and, and that's just reality from coaches to players to admin to like whoever it is like there's not a lot of loyalty in it um in terms of when the money comes calling but i'll say this you know there's a number of guys um on ucf that have been enticed and i'm just being true 
there's been guys that have been enticed for several large dollar amounts to go somewhere else, but they have stayed here. And just the resources we have, like we don't have the money that literally Nick Saban and Jimbo are talking about paying their players. Like we don't have that here, but guys want to be here. And we want guys that want to be here that to be here. So having said that, go buy Bowers, Bowser's shirts because he's here to stay. <laughs> Ryan O'Keefe, whatever they drop, go buy it because these guys aren't going anywhere, man. Sure, you've learned a lot as uh, as a businessman uh, yeah. about mission control. And I, what's been the biggest challenge for you in the growth of, and the progress of mission control? <laughs> Truthfully, just a lot of politics in it from university to university. Um, and there's several reasons for that. You know, universities want to have control of their athletes and things like that. So I understand it. Um, you know, that whatever their athletes do is a direct reflection of their university and vice versa. So I understand that part. Um, but the biggest challenge for me has just been individuals that don't have the best interests of the athletes. Um, and then also working with college athletes can be a bit of a headache sometimes too. So <laughs> I don't see myself staying in the space forever. Um, I'd like to have an imprint on it one way or another and providing opportunities to guys. Uh, but <clears throat> you know, it's, it's a lot of logistics. It's a lot of, it's, cause when money gets involved, involved with things, that's when things start to, things start to change and it starts to change certain people. So, um, there's definitely that balance you have to find, but just us as a company, you know, we're integrated with all our compliance departments and, you know, the deals that we procure for the athletes, we try to make them athlete friendly in the sense of being non-exclusive to where they're not buying to a certain company or a certain deal. Um, but that's all we can do as a company. You know, we, we can't control others. We can't control blue bloods that just have been doing pay for play for 30 years. Now they're OK with posting on social media. Um, that's the NCAA's job, right? That's the NCAA's job to enforce all that. Us as a company will keep being compliant. We'll keep having a paper trail of every dollar that comes in and out of Drainfield. And as long as we do that, we will be just fine. Casey, you weren't a lot of hats these days, husband, soon to be father, football player, NIL, uh, you know, uh, a, a businessman advisor. Put your salesman hat on for a second. I'm on the fence about going to this event on June 17th. Yep. Sell me on what 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 can I expect if I show up at the Celeste <laughs> Hotel on June 17th? So first and foremost, you're going to meet the three greatest quarterbacks in UCF history of all time. If you sign up for Michigan, Michigan Troll today for $10, you get $100 off up to four tickets. So instead of 250, you get them for 150, which includes food, drink, chance to meet all these guys, Dante Culpepper, Blake Bortles. We'll have a cocktail hour for the first hour and we'll have a, a great program with special guests that I have not yet named, but they might be coaching at UCF currently. And there might be someone directing athletics that might be there too from UCF. So, and there might be a former ball coach from UCF as well that has not been announced. So to me, it's, it's one of those things like what already advertises great with the free food and the athletes, but there's going to be so much more there that you just got to kind of be there for that night. And I think it's going to be hard to replicate having, having all these guys in one room again. Um, I think it's, I think it's sort of divine that this night is, is happening this time and, and obviously for the cause, the Otis Anderson Jr. Foundation and Michigan Troll, I think that should sell you more than anything. I saw there's a silent auction. Can you can you drop any of the potential items that are for bid? Yes. So the, the auction will actually start up next week. Um, for those that can't make the event, we'll have auction items virtually throughout the week. And the auction will conclude at the end of the night, Friday, um, on June 17th. There will be a game worn jersey of mine that was worn in a conference championship, um, signed and framed. Um, there will be Cole Pepper merchandise. There will be Griffin merchandise, um, Davis, Bortles. There will be a whole lot of stuff. And there will be some other, like Tom Brady, like there will be some other, like cool memorabilia things as well of just everybody that's an average sports fan, right? So. I think there's something for all the UCF fans and all the just casual sports fans that want cool memorabilia as well. Um, we're super excited, man. It's, it's, the Celeste is a really cool hotel. If you guys haven't been there on campus, their food is, they got a five-star restaurant right in there with, with great food. So I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm really excited to meet Dante and all these guys. So it's going to be, it's going to be a cool, cool night.
All right, you tell me the bathroom photo is there with your signature, I'm in. <laughs> hey, just for you, I'll make it happen. Done. <laughs> Deal. See you there. Sounds good. <laughs> Mackenzie, were you more nervous before the Peach Bowl in that first half or have, being coming a father next month or coming on this show tonight? <laughs> Man. He doesn't seem be, too gotta... bothered about being on with us, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I just threw that one in there. Man, I, I got to say being a father just because, I mean, I'm re literally responsible for a life for 18 years, right? But <laughs> and after I, that, no longer response. <laughs> no, you know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, it, like it's exciting and it's like terrifying at the same time. But I think the excitement outweighs the terrifiedness um, in terms of becoming a father. I just know that's the most important thing I'll ever do. So, like that's that's it for me. You know what I mean? Like that's like every say businessman, coach. I mean, whatever, whatever decision i decide like that is the the ultimate reason why i'm making that decision because it's in the best interest of him and, and my wife so that's that's how i've always kind of been just very family oriented and you know nothing's changed now it's just two different people instead of mom and dad and brothers before we run out of light there on your porch um, <laughs> i can walk inside what, my best. what what do you want to say to dante culpepper have you thought about that moment when you get a chance to talk with him? You know how important he is uh, to UCF. Yeah, well, you know, I got to talk to him for like 30 minutes on the phone. So that was great just to kind of chop it up with them. But I think more than anything, you know, I, I told him, you know, we want you to be involved here at the university as much as he wants to be. You know, he's down south, so it's, it's a little bit of a trek for him to get up here. But I think he was at the alumni golf tournament for the first time. Um, and... You know, just just seeing those glimpses of him being back here, I always wanted to meet him while I was playing and never got that opportunity. But I don't know if, like, I'll be, like, starstruck or giddy or anything like that because I already talked to him on the phone, but I'll for sure get a picture or something. Like, I won't fanboy too much, though. <laughs> uh, you've mentioned some of the names. Uh, you, Blake Bortles, Dante, Gabriel Davis, Latavius Murray. And I just want to go back to something. It's difficult to hear, but proceeds from this going to the Otis Anderson Jr. Foundation. It's still hard to believe this news all these months later, but this is important that this mission control event also benefit that foundation. Yeah, ab absolutely, man. Like I, I did a little autograph signing after the, the hula bowl down here and, you know, we were able to raise funds for Auntie D, Otis's mom. And, and I told her, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep doing all I can because I think it's when it's fresh that something like that happens to, you know, someone that you've seen or for me, someone that I love, you know, someone that's like family to me. Um, it's easy for most people to like see it and go on about it and then forget about it. Right. But that's that's not what we want in terms of, oh, because. As a football player, we don't win all those games without Otis. UCF's not where it's at without Otis Anderson Jr. Me as a person and all those guys in that locker room, the way he was as a person, how infectious he was, just the way he loved on everyone. Like we aren't who we are without O. So it's our it's our duty just to for his memory to live on through us, through his mother. Um and you know, we're gonna keep doing that and keep finding creative creative ways to keep honoring him. And one more time, this is missioncontrolucf.com, June 17th. I think you said it best. There may never be another event that brings all of these people together in the same room. That is a must for UCF fans. Yeah, like I said, man, this is this is special. It's like a solar eclipse happening, you know, just with all these guys in, in one room in one night. I'm excited that I get to be a part of it. And you know, I'm just excited. You know, I, I, don't, I really don't get to see a lot of the guys I play with. Um, you know, all in one setting. So I think this is going to be pretty exciting um, in terms of just going to see a lot of those guys again. Mackenzie Milton, Casey, we appreciate all the time you have spent with us tonight. Uh, enjoy that sleep while you can. Mm -hmm. And again, congratulations <laughs> on your recent marriage and impending fatherhood. Thank you, fellas. Appreciate y'all having me. All right. Thanks, Thank Casey. you, Mackenzie. Thanks, Casey. All right, fellas.